Hi everyone. Tonight I'm working on my test engraving files so I can share them and make them really easy to use. Uh, this is my previous test engraving that I was using and it, it did pretty well for me, but I figured if I was going to share a file, I might as well kind of fix it and make it look a little better. So I thought I'd share that and uh, show you how I'm putting this together and then share the file and show you how to use it. Here's my file in the software. I have my vector layer, which I have three different colors on. I have two different scores so that I can see uh, what the numbers are for the different settings, and then one for the outlines so I know where to put all of the test swatches. And then I have my cut. I got those colors by using Dremel's Kelly colors, so I actually had those colors in my Illustrator file. I also have uh, settings for each one of these little black boxes uh, behind here. Yeah. So each one of those boxes has a different setting, and that's why it's nice to share this file so you don't have to go through and specifically uh, assign those squares. However, there's a little trick with that that I'll tell you in a minute uh, when I tell you how to use this file yourself. So now I'm going to test cut this and get it going. I like to run this file on each new material that I'm going to be working with so I can see exactly what kind of effects the different raster settings are going to have. That way I have complete control and then I can decide exactly how deep I want the engraving to go or what color I want, especially if it's wood. The color is really important for my specific designs. So if you don't care as much, there are actually default settings in Dremel's software that work really well. But if you want a couple different depths, this is a great quick file to run, it doesn't use very much material, and I have a little hole in it too, so if you do this with a bunch of different materials, you just pop them on a, a ring binder and then you have your whole little material set you can look at whenever you're doing your laser cutting. My new test engraving is done. So that looks really nice, look at all those different colors, also the depth, and you can also see the kind of the caramelization of the off smoke uh, from the lower speed. But look how deep the deepest one is. That's awesome. Um, and you can see how that's a little bit different from my first test swatch. Also you'll notice all of these are uh, just adjusting the speed now because I like the medium resolution the best. And then I've also changed the depth. So it's depth versus speed. Whereas this one, I was kind of playing around with the resolution to see if I liked it or not. So here is my final file and I will share that out. So now I'm gonna show you how to use that Dremel file to make your very own uh, engraving test swatch on your Dremel laser cutter. So in the software, once you open it up, you have your laser cutter on. That's why you can hear it in the background. Uh, you just go to file and you can click open. This is different than importing because when you import, you're bringing in a PDF or an SVG file. Once you open, you can open any uh, Dremel file that you've saved out of there. You'll notice that it has the .bin as the ending. And so we have the test engraved. Once it opens, you'll notice that the name of the file is the same as the project name up there. So we've got the test engrave. Uh, this is when you want to change your material. So I have it for as birch plywood and that's what I was testing with. And when you open it, um, depending on the order of the, where, how the files are stacked, you might actually have to move the vector file out of the way and then move it back over top. So that's why I put the green boxes around so that I knew how to reline that up when I'm ready to cut it. So that's just for make it easier for me and for you hopefully. So I'm going to move that away for a second. What you want to check, um, what I noticed is that when I saved out my Dremel file, it does save most of the engraving. So for some reason, this first uh, engraving block, it changed the numbers on it. So just click through these really quick. This should all be like 30 
they should all be at 25% speed and then progressively getting 10% higher. So you wanna double check. So I'm gonna change that first one back to be 20% uh, at 25% speed. And then you just wanna click through all of them and ensure that it is the right one. And that just seems like a little bug in the software, which is totally normal for cloud-based software. Okay, so all the rest of those are okay. I think it's just that first one for some reason. Um, so that's why I made it so that you can just drag this up and down. So now I have that pretty much where I want it. Some of them are a little bit off, but that's okay. Um, you'll notice on the settings for the green score, I have it very, very light. So that way um, it's not actually cutting anything. It's just there so I know how to set up my file. And then I wanted the red to be a little bit darker. Okay, so now we're ready to go. At this point, I can uh, run perimeter to move my file around to the place that I want it to be on the material. Um, or I can just push start and send it over to the laser cutter. So I'll have the link to the Stromo file down in the comments or the description below and you can download it from the GitHub page. So go ahead and use that file. Let me know how it is or if you have any questions and let me know if you have that same issue with the first engraving block and if it's not saving the laser settings properly. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I appreciate the comments and I'm excited to keep sharing uh, my laser cutting progress and hopefully make it easier for all of you to get started with your first laser cutter too. Thanks.